What we're going to talk about today is our prime ribs here at the butcher shop and what might make them different than what you might see somewhere else downtown. First of all, we're going to start right here. This is our choice grade prime rib. Nice marbling throughout, excellent piece of meat. Over here to our right, we have a prime grade prime rib. You can see there's a little bit more marbling throughout the ribeye here. Even better. Less than 2% of the cattle grayed out at prime. This is a fantastic piece of meat. What we're going to show you today is what we do here that makes it a little bit different. We're going to start here, right here with the choice prime. And we're going to take off this skin that sits on top of this rib. It might not look a lot like a lot, but we're going to take this skin off here, this little felt. We're going to peel this layer off. What that's going to do is it's going to make it cook a little bit better for you. And you're not going to deal with that uh, skin being there when it comes time to eat it. We're going to pull that off, get it out of the way, and give you a little bit better prime rib for that. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to address the back end. When they bone these things out, the plant leaves a little bit of bone scab on the back. We're going to remove that also so that's not on your prime rib. Okay, so we've removed that also. Next, we're going to go ahead and loosen these back ribs off the back so that when you're done cooking it, they just fall right off and you have a nice boneless ribeye that you can slice through real nice and easy and your back ribs will be already cooked, seasoned, if you want to season them. And then you can just uh, fight over those rib bones like they do at my house when we have them for Christmas. Okay. Now that we have those removed, we're going to go ahead and tie them back on to hold this roast in form so it cooks evenly, it doesn't flatten out during the cooking process. And when you cook these, I always cook them rib side down. That's the best way to do it. Everybody's got their own idea how to cook a prime rib. We do ours about 350, about 12 to 15 minutes per pound. I like to pull them out at about 128 degrees. Gives it a nice medium center. You want to let that rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. And if you like it a little more well done, then we'll just cook a little bit longer. The other thing we can do for you down here at the butcher shop is we can cut these any size you like. It doesn't matter if you want one rib, two ribs, or seven ribs available on the whole prime rib. And they range about 18 to 20 pounds whole. But if you've got smaller needs, we'll cut you any size that you need. We can even pre-season it for you if you'd like. So now we got it all tied up, we cut this roast any size the customer might need. Now if you notice, these two ribs were about the same height when we started, but by tying it, it gave us a nice rounded, uniform roast all the way through, whereas this one's still flat, but as we tie it, it'll, it'll uh, get more rounded up also. Now you got a nice beautiful primary rose, nice marbling throughout the center, everything's ready to go. When it's done cooking, I'm just going to cut these strings, peel them out of the way. Now you have this nice boneless ribeye. If this was cooked and ready to go, all you'd have to do is get out your nice sharp knife in the kitchen. You can cut it right into steaks for your family. Just to show you the difference between a choice and a prime for the marbling, we'll go ahead and cut this one before it's tied just so you can see the difference. This is the prime one. Here's the choice one. You see more marbling in here. It's going to be a little bit more flavor, a little bit more juicy. Uh, overall, great piece of meat. Uh, one of the other things that we carry here at the butcher shop that you might not find everywhere else, this is an American style Kobe beef out of Climate Falls. So this is about as local as you can get for a piece of meat, especially for something as high end as an American style Kobe. Uh, this beef is raised, it's slaughtered in Climate Falls. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of meat. You can even see compared to the prime, has even a little bit more marbling. Uh, these things are fantastic. They melt like butter. If you guys want something like this, this is another item that we have for you that you're probably not gonna find anywhere else. We're happy to take care of you and get that for you also. This here is a dry aged prime rib. It has about 60 days age on it. Uh, we do these here at the butcher shop. It's pretty ugly right now. But we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and show you what's hiding underneath. You know, it's the diamond in the rough right now. So we're gonna start with this big piece of meat here. We're gonna go ahead and take it apart. 
get down to the good stuff. You can already see the color change when we take the bones off the back and expose the meat that's been dry aging in there. The reason we leave all this fat on the outside is to protect the meat on the inside so we can dry age it for that length of time and still have a nice, beautiful piece of meat. We're going to clean these edges up on the saw, cut through our bone, clean this all up. See the difference there. See the dryness line kind of creeps in here all around the edges, even though it had that big layer of fat on there. It's going to have a, a lot less blood in it, a lot drier. It's going to bring out the natural flavors in the meat. So we're going to go ahead and finish taking this apart over here on the table real quick. All right, we got all that age cleaned up off our ribs now. Again, we tie these up just the same as we do the other prime ribs. That gives you a real good idea of a, of a dry aged prime rib and kind of where it starts and how it gets its beginning and where it finishes at before it gets to your guys' plate. These are probably going to cook just a little bit faster because the lack of moisture has been extracted through the natural aging process. So we're probably going to cook a little bit faster. If you normally cook about 10 to 15 minutes, you might want to be in that 8 to 10 minute range instead of that 10 to 15 minute range. Uh, again, meat thermometer is always the best thing to use. And when you put that meat thermometer in the roast, you want to put it right in the end, making sure that it doesn't touch bone. Bone's going to give you a false reading. It's going to read a little warmer than the actual meat will. So you want to put that in the geometric center of the roast. And try to get to the heart of it. That's going to give you your most true temperature that you can get. These are some of the prime ribs that we offer here at the butcher shop. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. You guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you to all of us for the butcher shop.